Hey, guess what's happening on this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with your friend and host, Oscar Camejo. At the time of this recording, it's the second week of August here in 2023. It's been exactly three years to the day since I was hospitalized and learned that I had finally developed type 2 diabetes. Getting that call from my doctor's office that weekend, uh, actually it was on a Sunday, uh, and he had given me some instructions for me to drop everything and head to the emergency room. That was scary. You know what, folks? I was faced with the reality that type 2 diabetes had finally caught up to me because it was in that hospital that I learned that I finally developed the disease. So I want you to stay tuned to hear the rest of my story because it's very compelling, especially if you're new to this podcast. You know, I don't know your situation. I don't know what brought you here, but I am glad that you're here. Maybe you've been diagnosed with prediabetes or you have type 2 diabetes and you've had it for a while. So whatever your situation, I want you to know you're not in this by yourself. You could be in the hospital right now. You could be driving, you could be at work, you could be, I don't know where you are right now, but maybe you recently just got the news and you're feeling overwhelmed. You're feeling nervous. You're shocked. How could this happen? Yeah, trust me, I've been there. But regardless, I feel strongly that I need to encourage you, my friend. You see, in this episode, I won't be sharing the usual specific steps on what to eat and how to exercise, and so forth, I want to take a different approach. Instead, I'm here to simply help you come to grips with the reality of type 2 diabetes. And I want to inspire you to do whatever it takes to turn things around, because my friend, you can bounce back and you can turn things around. You had a crossroads right now, and you simply need to hear from someone who's been where you are right now. That's me. You want to hear from somebody who knows that you can win the battle against type 2 diabetes. Because friend, if I can do it, you can too. So stick around to hear the rest of this week's episode, my friend. Yes, you don't want to miss it. Let's go. Be sure to visit the website at www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com for access to free resources and other information that will help you along your journey. If you would like to submit a question or comment about the show or to learn more about the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle, you can always email me at hello at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Welcome to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with me, your host, Oscar Camejo. My goal is to help diabetics and non-diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. You know, folks, uh, I hear from people all around the world, literally, from the UK to, of course, here in the United States where I live, and people are struggling. They've learned that they've developed type 2 diabetes or they're trying to prevent it and they're scared. They don't know what to do. You know, folks, um, it's not an easy thing to be diagnosed with a chronic disease. When I was diagnosed, it was like I was hit with a ton of bricks. In fact, you know, today I was looking at some photos of me uh, when I was in the hospital back in August 2020. And you know what? I was looking at those pictures and I was overwhelmed with emotions because I'm like, man, I could have died. Yes, folks, I could have died. And I'm so grateful for this new lease on life and the opportunities that I have now to share my story. Man, it's just so powerful. In fact, you know, I've been getting requests from other podcasters and Um, some registered dietitians and folks that want to come on the show and also help to share content with you guys that will help you all to turn things around. I mean, I recently been asked by a group out in the UK (laughs) to be on their podcast so I can tell my story. So I'm just on this journey to help people, man. And 
I don't know what, again, like I said earlier, I don't know what brought you here. But my friend, I'm glad that you stopped by and you press play and you're listening. I want you to listen to the end. Because whether it's you or someone that you know, you're struggling and maybe you feel like all hope is lost. But today, I want you to know that today is the first day to the rest of your life. What are you going to do with this opportunity? Are you going to give in? Are you going to give up? No, don't do that. You don't have to. You see, we all know people who have uh, dealt with type 2 diabetes and maybe they've lost the battle, whether it's through um, just passing away or maybe you know somebody who's had some amputations. I know I have had some people that I know, friends who've lost limbs and, and so forth. So my goal is to be encouraging regardless of your situation. I'm not going to uh, give you a bunch of fluff. That's not my personality. That's not who I am. What you hear (laughs) is who I am. I'm going to be straightforward because you know what, folks, when I was in the hospital uh, three years ago, you know, I would look out the window and I just had a lot of time to think. I just remember you know, thinking about my life up until that point, I think I was, what, 47 at the time. And I was like, man, what's going on here? So I had to just come to grips with what was happening. I had to come to the reality of what was going on. It was a fact that I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Uh, It was a fact that I didn't know much about type 2 diabetes. It was a fact that I was overweight. Yes, I was obese. I was tired. I was sluggish. And I had poor eating habits, wasn't exercising much. And, but I honestly didn't know how I developed type 2 diabetes. All I know was I had this uh, IV drop or drip tapped to my arm and they were giving me fluids and keeping me hydrated because I went into the uh, hospital dehydrated and sluggish and going to the restroom to urinate like every 15 minutes, it seemed. And so sitting there in the hospital, looking out the window, I was like, God, I want to live. I don't want to die. I don't want to lose limbs. I need to turn things around. It was a difficult thing to go through, but my friend, I was able to successfully turn my life around. And eventually I was able to come off meds. I was able to come off diabetes medications, uh, high cholesterol medication, um, high uh, blood pressure medication, and so forth. And I'm, I'm happy, but it was a long journey. And so you right now, where are you right now on this journey of yours? Are you at a place where you're just at your wits end? Maybe you're motivated. Maybe you're like, okay, yeah, I found this podcast or I found some other literature and I am ready to go. Or are you just at this place where it's like, man, Oscar, I've been trying to lose weight. I've been struggling to get to the gym. I just never seem to find time. And I'm just feeling dejected right now. Well, if you're feeling dejected right now, maybe you're depressed and going through this whole roller coaster of emotions. I want to say this. I don't want you to dwell on the fact that you have type 2 diabetes and, um, you know, focus so much on the negative. But I want you to reframe your thinking for a moment. Because today is the first day to the rest of your life, you have a decision to make. Are you going to let diabetes win or are you going to beat it? Because it is possible for you to beat it, my friend. If I can do it, you can too. 
I learned eventually that I needed to lose weight and I had to prepare for success. But now, mind you, when I was in the hospital and even the weeks and months following that, I never heard of reversing type 2 diabetes. I was just told that I was going to have it for the rest of my life and I just needed to manage it. But something just deep down inside was just telling me that, nah, you can come off meds. You can beat this thing. Sometimes in life, we need that extra push and we need that reminder. We need to have someone in our corner who we can trust or is a trusted voice. And I want to be that trusted voice. So I want you to think for a moment. You know, when you get ready to move, right? Let's say moving from one state to the next or from one home to the next, you you want to have a successful journey, right? A successful move. So you want to move into this new home in this new city, and you want that to be a successful journey. But in order for you to have success, in that journey towards getting to your new home, you have to think about the destination, right? You keep the destination in mind. You start planning. You start assessing, assessing the cost and you start packing. Then moving, you know, moving day isn't always fun. You know, it's, it's a lot of sweat, you know, a lot of planning and preparation. But, you know, your focus is really on the destination. You want to quickly get out of the old house and into your new house. You know, you you can't wait to move. So I want you to use that same mentality when it comes to moving out of your current way of living, your lifestyle of how you eat, you, how you exercise and so forth. In order for you to move into and develop a new lifestyle of health and fitness, because you can. You see, when I came from the hospital in August 2020, I was on a mission. I knew my destination was good health. I didn't know how I was going to get there, so I had to go to work. Because you see, I had never been hospitalized before as an adult. You know, I lived a fairly healthy lifestyle. But being in that hospital, I was determined never to go back. I was uncomfortable in the hospital. I mean, it it was just the smell, the bed was uncomfortable. I was like, this is not a place for me. I felt trapped. And so leaving the hospital, that's when I started educating myself about type 2 diabetes and what causes it and what's going on in my body at the time and start learning about the development of um, insulin and what my body's supposed to do and all kinds of stuff. I learned about the medications that I was on and what the effects were and what they're supposed to do and all this stuff. You know, I had very little information on nutrition because, you know, it I just thought at the time, well, hey, I just need to do more exercise and so I can go ahead and start losing weight. So, folks, I had to go to school and had to learn about food, <laughs> if you will, because the more and more I uh, started delving into learning about type 2 diabetes and the causes, potential causes and so forth, it was more than just, you know, don't eat bread and don't eat rice and so forth. And so I even remember buying my first cookbook. It was called the Diabetes Cookbook. It was published by the American Diabetes Association. You know, there's like over 300 recipes in that book for healthy living. You know, it was like I was on a mission. You know, I'm looking at my shelf right now and I have dozens of books on health and nutrition, fitness and exercise. I mean, folks, I did a deep dive into learning about health and nutrition and how to not only manage type 2 diabetes, but how to overcome it. You know, the more I learned, uh, the more I started making adjustments uh, along the way. I started to adjust my mindset. I started to adjust my food and my habits around food, my mentality around food. I had to change my mentality when it came to exercise. 
And even my relationships, you know, with uh, people and love life and all that stuff, because, you know, when you're going through challenges with your health, you know, you want to know that you have people in your corner uh, who are going to support you and support your endeavors and your goals and your pursuit of your goals. So the things that I had to do um, is something that I want you to consider in your own life. Right now, yes, you're struggling, you're confused, but let's not dwell on that right now. Let's dwell on the end zone, if you will. Let's dwell on the goals and accomplishing those goals. And that goal is good health, is longevity. So it's important for you to make your journey towards good health not so complicated because I really don't believe that it has to be so complicated, folks. I want you to work on changing your mindset about yourself. Stop beating yourself up for having gained weight or having developed type 2 diabetes. Yeah, you know, maybe you were like me and you didn't take your doctor's orders originally. And now you're having to deal with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. Okay, it happened. Stop beating yourself up. Okay, stop, you know, dwelling on what you should have done and could have done. Focus on what you can do right now. And what I need you to do is stop dwelling in self-pity. Pick your head up and keep your head up. I want you to start thinking about your relationship with food. Yeah, a lot of us, you know, when we're overweight or dealing with some depression or stress at home or work, some people turn to food for comfort. It becomes a roller coaster of emotions and you just turn to food for, you know, just to make you feel good. But you know what? Food is for fuel. That's what our relationship with food needs to be. It's for fuel. It's for enjoyment. But we should never allow ourselves to get to the point where we use food to make it through the day emotionally because we're dealing with all kind of stuff. And sometimes that happens subconsciously. You know, we we grab a bag of chips or cookies and we start munching away, even on some popcorn or whatnot, because we're stressed out. You know what I mean? So we turn to food to give us comfort. You know, when we came out of our mother's womb, you know, we we look for food. For comfort, you know, and like a crying baby, once we get that food, we start to calm down and so forth. So we carry that into adulthood where our relationship with food is for comfort rather than for nutrition and to sustain life and give us the nutrients that our bodies need for good health. You know what I mean? Along with changing your relationship with food, of course, I want you to focus on your exercise and uh, developing an exercise routine that is sustainable and so forth. You know, of course, you, again, when I talk about relationships, you want to reevaluate your circle of influence because the people around you, believe it or not, they can influence you to pursue your goals or they can discourage you. And you don't want, you don't want to be around people who are going to tear you down or, and not support you in your um, pursuit of all things health. So I know what it feels like, folks, <laughs> to be, feel like you're alone and you're dealing with all this stuff by yourself and you want people to help, but you don't know how to either ask for help or you expect them to help you and you've not communicated to your loved ones how you need them to show up for you while you're going through this. Trust me, I've been there. I've been through all of that. But you know what? Um, it's something about going at it, even if you have to do it alone. So, yes, three years ago this week, I went through a lot, my friends. Trust me. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you everything that was going on. But one thing I do know is the things that I share with you today about changing your mindset and changing your relationship with food even drinking more water and understanding the purpose of it and 
really being inspired to exercise more and even reevaluating my relationships and, you know, with friends and, you know, other relationship, you know what I'm saying? I had to just come to terms with, hey, yeah, I, I, I was dealing with type 2 diabetes. Where do we go from here? Uh, and that brings up um, something. There's a book by Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, or, or a statement that he said in one of his books. And I live by this today, till this day. It goes like this, that the true measure of a man is not how he performs in times of comfort and convenience, but rather how he performs in times of conflict and controversy. Man, that's so powerful. When you're faced with conflict and controversy, when it comes to your health, you know, how you respond is going to make a world of difference. So, my friend, I didn't want this to be a long episode. I just want you to take some time to really think about your life and where do you want to go from here? Yeah, you've been diagnosed with prediabetes, type 2 diabetes. Your doctor told you that you're going to be on meds for the rest of your life and you just have to deal with it. Just manage your blood sugar, you know, try to eat right and try to exercise and just do your best. You know, (laughs) that's what I was told. But just know this, my friend. Deep down inside you is the will to live. You were put on this earth to live and to fulfill your purpose. I don't know what your purpose is. I don't know what your dreams and desires are. I don't know your age range. I don't know where you are in your stage of life. But when I'm out there running, you know, these races, 5K races and other races or just out jogging and I see people in their 70s and 80s you know, exercising and living their best life, man, that inspires me to keep moving. You know, I just recently ran a four mile race here in Atlanta. And at the end, I saw this group of um, older people and they were taking a picture, you know, they were doing selfies and all this, man. And they just looked great. And I was like, man, so me being me, I jumped up and just jumped in their picture and (laughs) I photobombed their picture. And man, I took a great picture with these people. It's three of them, two guys or two men and a lady. And I didn't know them, never seen them before. And it was just so great to see them out there doing life, man, and enjoying it. So my friend, if those people in their 70s. I don't know what their health conditions may may be or may have been, but I do know they were out there living their best life. So about you, my friend, I want you to focus on living focused and living fit and living a happy life because you deserve it, man. You don't have to be stuck in the hospital. You don't have to be going through all these uh, complications with your health. It's possible to turn things around, but it's going to start with you changing your mindset. Because if you don't change your mindset, it's going to be hard to change your relationship with food. It's going to be hard to uh, even have a desire to go exercise. It's going to be hard to reevaluate your relationships, but it's important. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's a biblical statement. You are who you think you are. If you think you're beaten, you are, my friend. But if you think you can beat diabetes, what do you think the outcome is going to (laughs) be? So that's it for this week, my friend. As always, stay focused, keep moving, never go back, leap forward, bounce back because you can, my friend. And above all else, trust God. You got this. I believe in you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. 
It's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.